Word Studies with Dr. Ray Winston, a powerful and in-depth study of the Word of God. Dr. Ray? In 105 says, Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Welcome to Word Studies. I am Dr. Ray, and I want to thank God for the opportunity to study with you the ever-living Word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Welcome again to Word Studies. On this program, we study in depth the words of God. Recently, we have been studying on the Pneumaticon. Pneumaticon, of course, is a Greek word for spiritual things, spiritual matters, things of the spirit. In particular, however, we're going to be looking at something that is perhaps, uh, maybe, it's probably not off the beaten path. And many, many times it's been covered in Scripture. But you know, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing. That means that you're hearing the Word of God over and over and over and over and over and over. Faith does not come by having heard, but by hearing, yes, So you're hearing it over and over and over and over and over again and again and again. Now, we're going to look in the book of Acts. If you've got a Bible, the Acts of the Apostles. Many people ask me, well, what does Acts mean? What does that mean, Acts? You know, are they bad actors or good actors? Are they actors? No, they're not actors as such, quote-unquote actors. But these are the actual things, if you will. Yeah, you could call it the book of things, uh, the book of Acts. What they actually did after the resurrection. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> they were all in one place. We're going to look at that in, in Scripture in a moment because they were afraid of the Jews, right? really. They, they didn't want to be crucified themselves because they had been with Jesus. All of the apostles, of course, had been with Jesus all the time that he was walking the earth realm until, of course, he was crucified. And then 40 days later, after being in the earth realm for 40 days, he ascended back to heaven. Yes. Well, the apostles were left here. Yeah, all of the apostles were. And therefore, they were, they kind of stuck together. You know, it's, it's kind of like if you're a believer, you're supposed to stick together with other believers, not with the world, as it were. Yeah, they didn't go to Pilate and, 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 and the Herod or anything like that. No, they were together. They didn't go to other non-believers, even the, 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 some of the, the Jews who were not believers. They didn't go to them, the, the, the high priests and so forth. No, they were together. Now, notice what happens with these believers. Now, remember, they're believers. Notice. When the day, this is Acts chapter 2, as a matter of fact, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost... What is Pentecost? Pentecost means 50. 50 days, yeah, after the, 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 his, his uh, ascension, yeah. <laughs> when the day of Pentecost had fully come. You know, it, it wasn't like a, it, it was partly here or not here. You know, many times uh, we do things in our time. God does things in his time. Yeah, when the day of Pentecost was fully had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were all together. That's why in church, you know, you had to be together in in one place, not spread out all over the place. While my wife's over here, my my cousins over there, my nephews over here, and so forth. Yeah, they were all together with one accord in one place. Notice verse two, and suddenly. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Have you ever heard a sound from heaven? Somebody say, yeah, I've heard a sound from heaven, Dr. Ray. What is it? Thunder. Yeah, that's a sound from heaven. And or, and, or either the, a plane breaking the sound barrier. Years ago, they used to hear that all the time. When planes broke the sound barrier, uh, you would hear sounds or boom. Yeah, like that. Well, this was similar, but it was louder. They were always one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. A rushing mighty wind, of course, it's like a tornado. That's the only thing I can compare it to. Because I was personally involved in a tornado when I, I don't know how old I was, yeah, eight years old, maybe less, yeah, maybe six or seven. The tornado blew our house down, blew the whole house down, left us standing in the midst. 
Nobody was even in. Nobody had a scratch. I think my uh, aunt or grand aunt or whatever she was, yeah, or my grandmother aunt had a scratch on her hand, and that was it. The only reason why she got a scratch is because she was standing holding the doorknob when the storm hit, the tornado. They had buried all of us. We were, you know, kids. They put us between mattresses so that nothing would fall on us, I suppose. Yeah. And uh, the storm hit, blew the whole house away. I mean, the whole thing, everything's gone. As a matter of fact, the only thing that was working at that time, we had a, a, a battery operated radio, and that radio was still playing. And they were telling us that a storm had hit. <laughs> I, I was standing there looking at that. Tell me about it. You know, it was raining so hard you couldn't even see, as a matter of fact. Okay. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Rushing and mighty. And it filled the whole house. Have you ever been in a house where you had, uh, remember when, uh, I think it was Mary, uh, the Mary, uh, the, the sister of Martha, when she was anointing God, Jesus' at feet and, and washing his, his and it, it, with that the spike nerd, you know, that high perfume that filled the whole house? Well, this is the same thing. This is that mighty wind, yeah, and it's filled the whole house. Then, notice verse 3, then there appeared to them. Divided tongues. Now, this is kind of a vision, isn't it? Divided tongues. You're looking at it. You can see it because it says appeared to them. Yeah. <clears throat> what was it? Divided tongues. Divided tongues means what? You know, sometimes when you read stuff, you go over it and you say, okay, I don't, I, I, if I don't understand it, I'll just keep on reading, right? Yeah, that's what many times that is done that way, that uh, if I don't get it, I'll just keep on reading by that one and get to one that I do understand. But divided tongues, divided tongues indicates more than one tongue. Yeah, many tongues, as a matter of fact. Okay, <clears throat> divided tongues. As of fire. They look like fire, right? Okay, <clears throat> remember, uh, I think it was Isaiah when the uh, angel or, or, or God himself placed a hot coal on his uh, in his mouth. It, it was the Isaiah decode, one of them. Yeah, placed a hot coal in his mouth and then he went out and preached the gospel. Yeah, okay. This is tongues or languages and fire, Tongues means languages, incidentally, but languages and fire, of course, <clears throat> kind of go together, as it as it were. Yeah, these are different languages. When it says tongues, languages, as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. I would believe. Now, this is me. That each one spoke a different language, other than his. His original language, yeah? His born into the world language, for lack of a better way of saying it. Okay. And it says, notice what it says in verse, four, for verse uh, what verse is that? Verse 4. Uh, why don't I put on my gophas so I don't, I don't, uh, the, the gophas, these things are called gophas and or lenses in, in uh, Spanish. They're called glasses, of course, in English. So, I'm going to put them on so that uh, I don't miss anything. I don't like to miss things, right? It's not that I need glasses, but uh, sometimes I, I'll get a word that uh, will say one thing, and I'll say it said something else. Yeah. Okay. Notice. It says, and they were all, not just one or two of them, filled with the Holy Spirit. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Does anybody know how many people were there at that time? Uh, when they were all filled with the Holy Spirit? Does anybody know? 120. Notice. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. The pneumohagion in the Greek language for Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, notice it does not say the Holy Ghost, does it? No. It doesn't say that. Why doesn't it say the Holy Ghost? Because in essence, there's no such thing as Holy Ghost. Yeah, if you're a ghost, you're not considered to be holy, are you? Have you ever heard any? Have, have you ever had anyone ask you if you were filled with the ghost? No, but they will ask you, "Are you filled with the spirit, sister and our brother?" Yeah, in some churches they'll, they'll just simply ask, "Are you filled with the spirit?" They're talking about the Holy Spirit, not the Holy. There is no Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They will never ask you, are you filled with the ghost, if you will. Remember when Jesus was walking on the water and he was coming near the boat and they were all afraid and uh, thought that he was a ghost. And Jesus said, I am not a ghost. 
Therefore, that indicates to me that ghosts exist. Yeah, at least in the minds of people, they exist. Yeah, and Jesus said, I'm not a ghost. Okay, it's me. I'm real. Yeah, notice. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak. Now, they're going to talk now, okay? Speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Now, I know the word utterance. You know, sometimes we go by that word utterance, we just assume we know. But utterance actually means ability. Yes, you're not going to speak in tongues, as it were, unless the Holy Spirit, not Holy Ghost, yeah, they filled the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues, other tongues other than their natural language. They were Galileans, yeah. They spoke Hebrew, and they had certain kind of dialects that they used, yes, in their speaking. They were speaking totally out of their language, speaking in another language that they had never, 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 never learned. It's not like you went to a school of, of languages, you know, like English as a second language or something or other like that, yeah, uh, or Hebrew as a second language or, or, or Greek as a second language. No, they hadn't done that. They hadn't, they, the only languages that they knew, they, perhaps, now I'm saying perhaps, perhaps many of them spoke only Greek and perhaps many of them spoke only Hebrew, yes, okay, but. Whatever their natural language was, that was not the one that they were speaking in. Okay? Notice, we're going to find out why. Why? Yeah. Why would you just suddenly, suddenly start speaking in another language that you've never even had? Right now, I'm speaking in English, as far as I know. Yeah. But you may be hearing me speak in another language, perhaps. Yes. If the Holy Spirit has given me, Dr. Ray, the utterance or ability to do that. So I'm speaking English, but you're hearing it as some other language. Now, there is uh, a way of doing this today, yes? In other words, someone could stand up in the, the, the let's see, the uh, United Nations building, yeah? Speaking in English. And people from all over the place, Thailand, yeah, Vietnam, uh, or Russia, or China, or Mexico, or wherever, speaking that only speak their language, but they can simultaneously convert from English into all those different languages immediately. It's not like you got to wait that 10 seconds. Well, okay, you got a 10 second delay, and then uh, he can say it. It's like you have an interpreter. Like if you're a preacher, you're preaching on a big auditorium someplace in Africa or wherever. Yeah. And the people don't speak the English, or you only speak English. They speak Swahili. Yeah. So you would have an interpreter. Every time you say a word, he would repeat that word in uh, Swahili. Yes. Well, they can do better than this, than that. They can simultaneously electronically translate from English into maybe a hundred different languages immediately without any hesitation or whatever or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is in essence what's going on here. Notice. They were filled with the Spirit, Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance or the ability. Notice, the Spirit has to give you the ability, yes, the Holy Spirit. You don't just simply do it on your own, because a lot of people say, okay, I wanna go, I'm going to speak in tongues. Uh, uh, no, I'm going to go in my living room, I'll go away, yeah, I'll go to church and just speak out in tongues. Yeah. Without the Holy Spirit or God or anybody being involved in it. Well, you go figure that one out. Notice. Notice verse 5, and there were dwelling in Jerusalem. Notice what we know where they were. They were in Jerusalem. Dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men. What does the word devout mean? <laughs> mean? Yeah. They were holy men, yeah. Men of God, not just uh, worldly people wandering around. Men of God, devout men. From every nation under heaven. From every nation under heaven. I need to read that again because that sounds like everybody in the whole world, yeah, were there in Jerusalem. Well, 
the truth of the matter is they there may have been a representative <laughs> get that word out, a representative there from every nation. Yes? Why were they all there in Jerusalem at the same time, yeah, on the day of Pentecost? Well, because on the day of Pentecost, that was one of the Jewish Jewish festivals, the day of Pentecost. And they were all there, okay? From all over the world. They, you know, they were there for various reasons, if you will. Okay. And when this sound, the sound that came like a mighty wind, occurred, they heard it. Notice, it wasn't like uh, only the disciples or the apostles heard it. These people from all over the world heard the sound. Right? And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together. It, it, you know, it's like something uh, strange or whatever is going on, like a, 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 a falling star, yeah, for lack of a better way of putting it, or, or if from heaven, yeah, fell to the earth. And everybody wants to gather around to see what's going on. We got to see, we got to check that out, man. What's happening? This is, in essence, what's going on here. And when this sound occurred, the multitude, the whole crowd, came together and were confused. Yes. You'd be confused, too, if you heard something like that. Yeah, a, a freight train coming from heaven. They were confused. They were wondering, what's going on? What's happening? You know, like, uh, what's going on? There was a singer that sang a song called What's Going On. I forget his name right now. Anyway, Marvin Gaye, yeah, that's what somebody said to me. Marvin Gaye said, what's going on? You know, the people wanted to know what's happening, man, what's happening here? Uh, they were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Remember I said that if God gave me the ability, you could hear me speak in your own language. If you speak whatever language, yeah, God could do that. Yes, he's doing it here. These people don't speak those languages in the natural but in the Spirit. That's why the Bible says, walk in the Spirit. Yeah, we're going to walk in the Spirit. <clears throat> and it goes on to say, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. <laughs> yeah, if you're walking in the Spirit. Somebody asked me, well, what's the lust of the flesh, Dr. Ray? Well, other than what's of the Spirit is the lust of the flesh. Yeah, I don't want to go into that right now. We're going to, come, we're going to go through that um, subject matter later. Notice, verse 7. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, <laughs> notice, amazed and marveled, saying to one another, okay? In other words, remember the, the movie uh, Star Trek? Uh, was it Star Trek? I think it was Star Trek, yeah. And there was a, uh, a, a character on there called Spock, yeah. <clears throat> and what would he say all the time when it's something uh, strange or uh, ununderstandable or some, some weird thing that a human did? He, Spock, of course, was a Martian. He would say, fascinating. And in other words, these people were fascinated at what was going on here. Notice, they were saying to one another, look, are not all these who speak Galileans? They expected to hear the Galileans speak in whatever language it is that Galileans spoke in. But now they're hearing these Galileans speak in all of these different languages, so people from all over the world, yeah, are hearing what they're saying in their own tongues. Notice. Verse 8. And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born. In other words, you know, I'm from China, but I can hear them speaking in my tongue. I'm from Russia, and I can hear them speaking in my tongue. Yeah, I'm from Sw uh, uh, Bangladesh, and I can hear them speaking in my tongue. Yeah, <clears throat> all of the world. I can. I, I can't name all the languages, all, all, all of the, the different nationalities that were there. Okay, and they say, and how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? And now, we're going to find out who are these people that are gathered there, yeah, or assembled there in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. 50, Pentecost means 50. Okay. Notice, verse 9, here they are. Parthians, Medes, somebody said you mispronounced that one. Elamites, 
those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Tamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, you think I'm almost through, huh? And the part of Libya, notice, adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome. <clears throat> Perhaps Caesar was there, notice, both Jews and proselytes. Am I through? No. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues. What were they speaking? The wonderful works of God. In other words, they were speaking all the good things that God had done and, and or was doing, has done, will do, yes. They were hearing this. All of these people from all over the world. No wonder, yeah. <clears throat> the Bible asks, demands, commands that we be filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit, the pneumohagion, not the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Spirit. Now, I realize that Holy Ghost has been accepted as referring to Holy Spirit, yes? But, like I said before, nobody ever asked you if you were filled with the Ghost. They will ask you if you were filled with the Spirit, and you know exactly what they're saying when they say, are you filled with the Spirit? They know you're talking about the Holy Spirit, yes? Okay, if someone says, are you filled with the ghost? Uh, okay, okay. Now, notice. Verse 12. So they were all amazed and per perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? They didn't know what it meant. They, they were, they, I would have, you know, I was in the same thing. You know, many times you go to a church, everybody's in there speaking their tongues, and you're sitting there thinking, well, I'm not speaking their tongues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how, or I, perhaps I hadn't been filled with the Spirit or something or other. You feel kind of strange, you know, like you're, you're, you're out of place or something like that. Yeah. Everybody in the whole church apparently were filled with the Spirit and speaking, and speaking in other tongues, and you're sitting there saying, well, uh, sometimes, you know, we want to, we want to fit in, don't we? Yeah, we want to be a part of this thing. You know, it must be good. Otherwise, why would everybody be doing it if it's not if it's bad? Yeah. Okay. So we start trying to speak in tongues, not because we had been given the utterance by the Holy Spirit, but because we want to fit in, so to speak. Yeah. So something comes out of your mouth. But people will ask you, Doctor Ray, uh, well, how do I speak in tongues? Well, you know, what do I say? Yeah, How, what, what comes out of my mouth <laughs> yeah, if I speak in tongues? Well, <clears throat> the truth of the matter is anything that comes out of your mouth, if it is, if it is produced by the Holy Spirit, you're speaking in tongues. Yeah, you may not even know what that is. That word is that's coming out of your mouth. Yes, you're speaking in tongues. Obviously, if you're saying something and you don't understand it. Yeah, it's another tongue, okay? It's, it's something, if you're sincere. I'm not talking about somebody, the one who's speaking gibberish, gibberish, gibberish is, you know, you can just start saying blah, 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 whatever, yeah? That's kind of gibberish. But the Holy Spirit is not going to give you the ability to speak gibberish. You would be speaking in another tongue. Okay, notice. Now, they were so confused, so perplexed, so uh, uncertain about what was going on. Notice what some of the others said in, in verse, verse 13. Others mocking. You didn't have people mock people who were speaking tongues. They said, oh, I don't know. People, you know, they were just all out there uh, faking this stuff, right? Yeah. That's what people think. Even today, if you go to some churches where people are speaking in tongues, there are people who will show up and say, oh, people are just faking that. You know, yeah, that's not real or something like that. Notice what these are saying the same things here. Notice. Others mocking said they are full of new wine. Now, uh, you might think there are some religions that tell you that, uh, well, uh, drinking wine is a sin. <laughs> Oh, okay. Like some people will tell you having money is a sin. Well, both are wrong. Yeah. Having money is not a sin. Drinking wine is not a sin. <clears throat> the Bible said the love of money is the root of all evil. 
Yeah, not money itself. Yeah, money is neutral. You know, you can do anything you want to do with it. Essentially, yeah, people do. You know, anything they want to do with money if they got enough of it. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. You could kind of relate that to speaking in tongues, if you will. Yeah. Uh, speaking in tongues is not a sin. <coughs> Notice. But they thought that they were drunk. <laughs> yeah. They, they must be drunk. And you can walk into a big church and everybody's speaking in tongues. You say, okay, they must have had too much communion wine or something or other like that. <laughs> yeah. Notice. Now, Peter has been filled with the Spirit, yes? Remember before Peter was filled with the Spirit, what he did? He denied Christ, Jesus, three times, yes? Three times, not one time, but three times he denied him. And uh, then, of course, Peter was brought back into the ministry by Jesus. And uh, Peter is now, of course, filled with the Spirit. Notice what he does. He's bold now, if you will. Before, he was fearful. And Jesus had already told him uh, uh, many times, that is, told his disciples, fear not, fear not. Peter was fear fearful. All the disciples that run away, fearful, right? Notice, Peter, now, in the book of Acts. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, they all stood up, evidently, raised his voice and said to them, now remember, Peter was a leader, the, the quote-unquote leader. He was not, a, he, Peter was a leader by the Spirit of God. Not because Peter had been chosen as a leader. You know, many times you'll, you'll, you'll have a, a group of people and you'll say, okay, I want to choose uh, Brother Johnson there as our leader. Yeah, that wasn't the case with Peter. Peter simply acquiesced, as it were, to leadership. Notice. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raises his voice and said to them. Now, Peter is talking to all of those people from all those different countries around who are standing there saying, these people are drunk. Okay? Notice. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. And heed my word. Peter said, listen to me. Yeah. Okay. Pay attention. Okay. For these are not drunk. Talking about the, the, the apostles. Yeah. Those who were speaking in tongues. Yeah. These are not drunk. Now, how can you be drunk if you don't drink wine? Yeah. Okay. These are not drunk as you suppose. Since it is only the third hour of the day. What time is the third hour of the day? Six, seven, nine o'clock, perhaps, yeah, around nine o'clock in the morning? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> seven, eight, nine, yeah, around nine o'clock in the morning. Okay, they're not drunk because they don't drink that early. Yeah, wine. But in the Hebrew culture, they drink wine, yeah? Okay. Now, I, I want to talk some more about that next time, but I need to mention who I am. My name is Dr. Ray, in case you're wondering who is that preacher. Yeah, perhaps it's on the screen. I don't know. But anyway, we have a church that's located at 4153 Overland Avenue, Culver City, California. You know where Culver City is? Culver City is somewhere between uh, 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 Santa Monica and Los Angeles, yeah, in that general area, west the side of, of the of the city, yeah, yeah, near Sony Studios. In case you're wondering, well, I don't know why that is, or something or other like that. And uh, if you want to come to church service there on Sunday mornings, nine a.m. sharp, we start nine a.m. sharp until ten thirty a.m. We try to be punctual, as it were. You know, you know, the Bible says about be, be, being punctual or being on time in the fullness of time. God sent his only begotten son. So therefore, if God was timely, so are we. If this program has been a blessing to you and your family or has helped you in any way, please feel free to write to us and pray for us. Remember also, we need and appreciate your financial support. Please send your financial gifts and love offerings to Dr. Ray Winston at P.O. Box 1173, Culver City, California, 90232. That's Dr. Ray Winston, P.O. Box 1173, Culver City, California, 90232. You also may call Dr. Ray at area code 310-559-8320 or 800-747-8320. Remember also, God loves a cheerful giver.